So this is going to be a little something different. I mentioned in part 11 of the Boazon that there was a huge change log for Median XL 2017, and here I have it. See all of the shit that was changed. It's quite a lot, actually. So it's also why I didn't go into massive detail. Um, because I wanted to kind of make my own little video about this and give my personal thoughts. Because I've been playing XVI starting, I think, May of last year, which I think was close to when XVI was released. So that was the first time I ever played Median, so I've been playing it for a while. So let's see. Balance reworks. Okay. Player damage and monster life have been reduced by the same amount. So nothing's changed, apparently. Less spell damage from all sources, or base spells. Base damage of spells. Um, as long as... Well, as long as nothing's changed, like this said, I guess that'd be fine. Lower base weapon damage. Enhanced damage stat now caps at 200%. I don't know. Oh, excuse me. I don't know about that one. Like, I kind of like the 350 cap, but at the same time, at least for weapons, you don't have to cube as many mystic orbs into the, um, into the weapon to hit the cap and then put in your rune ward if you want to do that. And of course I assume that um, putting in jaw runes, shyad runes, or capraxis stones will still increase it beyond its cap. Or of course um, rune words as well. Lower weapon damage modifiers on skills. Okay, um, I'm assuming that would just mean like Instead of, for example, five fourths, it weapon damage, for example, might be like three fourths for parasite. Maybe I don't know. So, lower amounts of flat damage, both magical, physical, and elemental. Eh, I don't know about that. And reduce life steal penalties to one one, one seven, and one fifteen on hatred, terror, and destruction. That will definitely keep most characters alive longer and make it a bit easier, maybe. But, th but then again, if we're reducing our damage, then it might be the same, so. Damage reworked has also allowed us to address long-standing problems, physical and magic damage skills were near useless because they had no appropriate resistance pierce stat on gear. In order to keep it more balanced, let's see, resistance of regular enemies, zero, all on hatred, wait, immunities are unchanged, okay, okay, uh, so, z no, okay, so none of them ha, no regular enemies have any sort of physical resistance, but the immunities are unchanged, so, what I'm gathering from this is everything will have a set resistance as is shown here and here. Um, but if they were coded to be immune to a certain element, they're still going to be immune to that. That would be my guess. And resistance is a boss is a destruction. Full Okay, 30, 15 to 35 percent physical, magical, fire, lightning, cold, and 40 percent to immune to poison. I'm guessing this is to prevent casters from insta gibbing a lot of the bosses, which is good for balance purposes because at least you could still kill them. That would be my personal take on that. So nothing really to complain about here in my opinion. Let's see, reductions to the amounts of elemental peers. The easiest to obtain items such as TUs up to level 100 rune wards, rares and crafts have 50% less peers. So I'm guessing that would mean that let's say if something can have 
minus 15 or 20% uh, enemy minus X resistance, it would go down to 10. That would be my guess. And harder to obtain ones such as greater rune words and sets have a smaller reduction to peers. Okay, so it will still affect sets, I see. Well, um, given that heroic shields no longer exist, so, so needing a lot of peers won't be as big a deal anyway, so that's not so bad. Skills in general have received 50% pierce reduction, with several exceptions. Okay, well, here's talking about the heroic shield removal and revamp monsters instances. It, oh, crushing blow. Due to the multi hit nature of virtually all skills, it's always been vastly more powerful and median than ever intended. With the design, yeah, yeah, because, um, a lot of builds could easily obliterate everything because of all the crushing blow. We have reduced the amount of crushing blow items and skills by 50% with some exceptions. Keep enhanced damage and defense rolls consistent. We have, okay, the cap of enhanced defense to 200%. Okay, so enhanced damage and defense is only 200%. Base defense of all armors has been buffed to compensate for the above change. Okay. Magic damage. Uh, damage type that when used against players delivers intended value. It will never be widespread. Test. Uh, okay, this is... This seems to be PvP stuff here. Debuff auras on bosses, but not desirable since it adds more overhead. Unintended interactions and... Okay, performance problems. Magic resistance values on gear have been reduced. Magic resistance on Riptide rune word has been replaced. I never used that one. Summons which are previously magic immune have physical resistance. Okay, so that's all of the um, necromancer summons. Removed magic immunity from most reanimates and resurrected revenants lose their magic immunity. Okay, so the cheese, cheesing startled witch by reviving Dark Warns from Mure won't be a thing. And, okay, all animations, which are four or five frames, are now one frame longer. So I think that's going to hurt uh, Super Beast's um, cast rate, because I think that was only four or five frames. Cast rate with orbs and wands is only one frame slower compared to wielding a staff. Okay, so you can actually cast with a staff somewhat, uh, somewhat quick now. Okay, this is already eight minutes, but that's okay. I'm willing to go as long as it takes. FCR needed to reach maximum breakpoint has been standardized. It takes more to reach five than six and so on no matter the character. I see. Hmm. Not sure how I feel about that one. I kinda like the characters having their own um, animations and such, but I'm willing to see how this affects the game before I make a judgment. Weapon speeds rework Two-hand weapons are now slower compared to one-hand equivalents. Um, I'm not sure how I like that. <sighs> oh, I, I'm tired. I work graveyard. Um, I kind of like being able to attack quickly with two-handed weapons, but as long as... I guess it would be okay if we don't go back to, like, the really, really slow attack rate of uh, a lot of weapons from Classic D2. Heavier weapons such as maces and axes are slower in comparison to lighter weapons such as swords and daggers. Eh, don't mind that too much. The weapons which were slowed by this change have received a base damage buffed buff. Okay, so crossbows, two-hand, okay, 
two hand maces, aka mauls, two hand axes, aka great axes and such, javelins, and one handed maces. Naganad has always maxed out your attack animation even with no attack speed. I actually didn't know that it did that. I never played a Naganada sin. Okay, so let's see. Descriptions per base level gain the bonus. Okay, so that's hard points and that's per skill level. Okay. And it just changes fractions into percentages, which eh. <laughs> I like this part. Text on tooltips has been reduced by cutting out irrelevant information. 10 yards or shoots every 5 seconds, but the range fast time never changes. Hits multiple times. What doesn't? This is median. I like that description. And... Okay, prefixes. Okay, um... Eh, yeah, you can read this. Just do not involve damage. Do not trigger on kill effects. Oh, spells don't effect on kill effects unless poison damage. War projectile. Okay. So this is basically the same, I think. Proved icons instead of the question marks, which I like that. Makes it look nicer. Improved wording and brevity of commonly used text strings. And long-winded explanations on reward skills. Um, I'm not sure what it's talking about because I think most of those are pretty simplistic anyway. So let's see. We're introducing the new core here. I've mentioned this. Max character level increased to 125. And the last five are hard to obtain. Gold is now automatically picked up outside of Act Towns. Thank God. Because that is a pain in the ass in um, farming Island of the Sunless Sea and grubbers and such. I do like that I can now just pick this up. Increase limit of areas the game can have. Which is good. So it doesn't... Uh, just have a bunch of random crap like and just re and you don't have to just replace old areas highest possible character resistances have been capped to 90 percent um now in now before it was up to 95 if if it's capped to 90 there'd better be a lot less uh there had better be a lot less uh, enemy pierce, because if not, this 90% will not be near as uh, good, in my opinion. Damage cap remove. I've heard that there's a damage cap to a lot of stuff, but I've never hit that, I don't think. And new monster health cap. A new stat allows us to give monsters virtually infinite health okay and third-party cheats have been disabled and then to accomplish these reworks it was necessary to drop compatibility with previous patches this is what I said in that video as well D2SE and plug Y still work actually do I even have D2SE because I think I just remember Yeah, I don't even. Yeah, I don't even remember ever getting that on. Still work, but you need to edit their INI files to load MXL DLL. So let's let's see. Hold on.
uh, not sure how to really do that because I am a bit of a dumbass when it comes to doing this, but I'm sure someone will be able to help me with that once they once everyone learns how to do that. So no Mac compatibility, which pfft, don't care. Reworked health and damage on hatred terror. Reduced variety spawning on levels to reduce clutter and improve difficulty curve. And elite monsters will now generously drop potions similar to how champions drop them in uh, vanilla Diablo, which I'm all for that because like you almost never get potion drops anymore. I mean, not that it's hard to buy them, but I did like being able to just find them randomly. Um, increased experience given by all monsters by 25%, which will make it a little bit easier to level up. Monsters in hatred are more vulnerable to lifesteal. I think that was already touched upon, wasn't it? Up here. Oh, uh, wait, where was that? Yeah, right here. I think that was already mentioned. Remove stun effects from bosses that cause desync. And reward cheesing. Well, that's more for online. Fix a bug with summoner AI that would cause it to select target with low elemental resistances. Don't really know about that. But whatever. We'll move on. And all the bosses have increased health on terror and destruction. And let's see. Durial removed amp aura. I don't know what this amp aura is. But whatever, it's removed. Diablo reduced melee hit on hatred difficulty. I'm assuming that means he doesn't do that as much. And as for the shard spawns for Bale, I would like to see how they're spawned. Because I assume the um, Mirror Mirror minigame or whatever that's called still exists. Let's see. Griswold no longer has melee aura, thank god. Because that was kind of stupid. Ancients removed a void, increased health. Thank God. Level reward won't work past level 120. So that's something everyone should keep in mind. And I think by the point time you get to this point in destruction, it might actually be impossible to get there before level 120. I could be wrong. But... I'll have to see about that. Shank increased health and damage. Doom Cloud reduced minions. Oh, to help with the sprite limit. And Countess reduced firewall damage, which, thank fucking god, because. Okay, I didn't mean to do that. Because her firewall pretty much insta gives everything that's not immune to fire. Summoner's just more health. Um. Startled Witch, removed in regular world areas. So, does that mean that they will no longer spawn in the Tamo Highland, Rocky Waste, and uh, Frozen Tundra? Is that what that's saying? Or is this actually talking about the Startled Witch boss? I'm hoping it's more the former, because I hate going through... Air, the normal areas and finding witches randomly. So. Huh. Reduce damage of the trap rat, which. And it's not a bad thing. Reduce damage on immolation pro bomb proc for the djinn. Thank god. Reduce pack size for Neva. Thank god. Detonator. Chance to cast. Rock has been changed to 33, 66, and 100 based on difficulty. That I don't mind so bad because at least the detonator fireballs are. Uh, one, they don't seek their targets, and number two, they're slow and easy to avoid anyway. And Fire Blood, Honest Knight, and Daystar is just smaller packs and/or reduced damage. Well, Daystar's increase, so. 
Let's see. Ooh, challenge scrolls. This is new. New items dropped by key bosses, which will describe the challenges in game so players don't miss them. And level challenge zero is removed, which um, I've said before, doing that with certain builds is a really fucking stupidly hard. And with others, it's stupidly easy. Like, the first part of the Lazy Den, uh, Vessel of Judgment just completely obliterated them. And Vessel of Judgment, or Vessel of Retribution is even stronger. So, that's just an example. Level Challenge 1, all the trials now cap at level 50. Which, if they're gonna have the furthest one be level 50 and have it be, and that's the best, uh, um, reward. It should have been that way anyway, in my opinion. And level challenge two now consists of defeating the death projector at level 90 on terror. So it says before, not at level 90 or below. It says before level 90. That would probably actually be easier than killing what's his name because all you have to do is avoid the insta kill beam and avoid the mechanics which aren't that hard dragon eggs is removed if i use the d2 clicker um if i use the d2 clicker i would be mad but i never did so i don't care about that and re crown mini game removed as it was dumb thank which I agree. I don't much care for that myself. Just because I hate witches. Removed, m reward moved to Spirit of Damnation. Okay, so we're not going to get that till COV now. And Uber Quest. Removed all heroic shields from the game. Thank God. Increased experience in Viz, Jim, Colin, Grad, Tranatha, Kuras 3000, Fosdenville, and Duncraig on Destruction. Got no problems there. Uh, let's see. Zaxxas. Okay, and the Wretched Sands. So I'm guessing it's just... Okay, yeah. So Wretched Sands, I guess, is just a replacement. Actually, no, wait. The trailer showed the Wretched Sands. Looks like um the Twin Seas area, kinda. But he still does all the same attacks. I think. Quavsin no longer pierces elemental resistance. Um, so if he no longer pierces elemental resistance, does this mean that he'll be a pushover now? Soul Stealer will heal 5% of life whenever he kills something. Which, that might not be good if you're a summoner. And, oh, he does more damage with Trinity Beam. Um, that could actually be pretty bad. Depending upon how high the elemental pierce, or the elemental damage goes. And new skill of Bone Nova, which obviously I know nothing about, because it's a new skill. Astrogha, boss spawns less traps, and destroying them will now only heal him for 4% of his maximum life. Which is good, but it didn't say anything about the um, one health curse. So I assume you still don't want to destroy them. And Frozen Orb now ignores cold immunity. Not that... Uh, I don't think anyone really used summons in this fight, did they? And Darklings now retaliate sometimes with Death Strike with Slain. I'm assuming the Death Strike is instant kill. And new Demetrium Aura. Uh, it'll be interesting to see that when somebody better than me uploads videos of them defeating these bosses. And Kabraxas now actually casts Punisher Barrage more frequently. So that will eliminate the cheesing from Rathmus Chosen, because that's how I killed Kabraxas with a crossbow necro once. But you absolutely can't let your minions get killed with through Rathmus Chosen. Greatly reduced 
number of shadow cells summoned, but they're tougher. Oh yeah, and the warm spawn's no longer there. He also has the 5% heal maximum life. Okay, so that will actually make it a lot harder to use uh, the cheese with crossbow strategy. No more broadside, and I don't know what this Judgment Day new skill is, but I'm immediately thinking that some stupid reason he'll tr somehow trigger um, Mothael and, and or Imperius and or the invisible Dark Edriums, which would be dumb, but I'm not sure what this Judgment Day skill would possibly be, unless it's some some form of Instagib Meteor Shower, maybe. Who knows, we'll have to wait and see. And BPR has reduced cow rush damage, but more foul fight damage. That would be the, the chicken thing. Let's see. MCS now takes two purify hits to be destroyed, and mob's health reduced by 20%. Okay, so it's actually easier to kill the stuff around it, which would actually probably make it easier to be farmed. And let's see. Aldisian's is, uh, the Aldisian fight is reworked. Reworked the stage that required reflected damage. Let's see, reworked boss fight of the void. Eternal ghost no longer drops shrines. Eh. Reduce damage and projectiles on origin of symmetry for the startled witch fight. And Infernal Machine and Death Projector have reduced health, and the mechanics damage is lowered on Terror. Marco has been removed. Brother Laz is renamed Archbishop Lazarus to avoid real-life references. I don't know why they would do that. Although I think one of the bosses of Diablo 1 was named Archbishop Lazarus. Zorun Zin summons citizens instead of rats, which... He did that in the, the um, Chaos Edition in the Sin War. I know that was a thing. And Devastation. is I'm assuming that's an insta-kill spell, just like his uh, six-directional Nova of Doom. And he drops Mystic Shard. Didn't he already drop the Mystic Shard? Or no, he dropped the Unknown Skull too. And Talrasha has greatly reduced Elemental Pierce and increased health. Akarat is has a lot less follower damage. Okay, so I probably won't get insta-killed by him then. LAJ has reduced heal rate, which will make him easier to farm, thankfully. And to get um, Jatan's Gate, which is pretty much required for Fosdenville. Uh, let's see... Reduced density in the cow level, which it caused this computer to crash once. Reduced lag by sun revelers and island of the sunless sea. Yashari Sanctum's polar warm on death proc has been reworked. I've never actually, I don't think I've ever seen the polar warms on death proc. Unformed land, terror rules easier to kill. Uh, Primus's Messenger in the Triune does more flat damage. Um, I, I kind of felt he already did a lot anyway. Um, Tranathla has reduced density. And Fosdenville has slightly reduced density. Um, created and improved auto map entries for TA, Duncraig, and Yashari. Don't quite know what that means. But I think I remember reading that Duncraig only has the newer um, form. Like, the old one doesn't exist anymore. Um, yeah, right here it says. And removed Annoying Bush. Um, let's, see. let's see. So, for Act 2, rework map. Maggot layers, restored areas, and mobs. I can only assume 
that this means the maggot layer is back to its original vanilla D2 difficulty. But obviously reworked to be like the same relative difficulty. Um, Wretched Sands. That's um, this. That's that guy. Oh, and he's found under the, inside the Deaths of Duriel's lair. And Tranathla passages are wider. <laughs> R.I.P. barrels. Yeah, I bitched about the barrels more than once. And added more trees. I don't know about the trees, because they already kind of blocked the view a lot. Um, Aldisian's tomb, new area. But the Aldisian quest is pretty much the same, I guess. Sewers, restored area, and mobs. Wait, so... Okay, right here. Unformed land, Act 5. Removed moved to under Harrogath. Is now a seven-floor tower. Okay. Wait a minute, hold on, then. Uh, okay. World Nexus moved to the Proving Grounds. Crass 3000 moved location to Travancall. I guess it's going to be like a portal, much like uh, the Triune. And Pandemonium Fortress and Harrogoth reverted map to the original. I wish they would have done the same to um, the Crass docks, because I personally feel the old... the vanilla layout was much better. Let's see. Small chant column grad. Small chance to drop wings of the departed. To honor the death of a member of the community. Um, does this mean inside the Uber by everybody? Or just the um um uh, the avatars? And I, I don't know I'll admit I'm ignorant and don't know who this uh community member is that died but uh um rest in peace to you i i'm obviously not happy to hear that a community member died not at all okay, so now we're moving on to characters um jesus this is already 30 minutes this is going to be over an hour at this rate uh sunstrike increased damage now gains an arrow per three base levels. Okay, so... Okay, so that's really going to be like multi-shot then. Uh, Phalanx area coverage decreased. Damage per second increase. And managed progression reworked. I assume it's going to be more mana intensive. Because currently, I haven't shown this off yet, but Phalanx... When you put 15 points in there, it covers an area of 98 yards, which is like 3-4 screens. And there's no reason for Phalanx to be that wide. Wormshot's initial range increases. Range synergy reduced, damage increase, and mana progression reworked. I assume it's going to take more mana per shot. So, I'm guessing the Sunstrike won't be as important, and we'll actually want to invest more in Wormshot later. Um, let's see. Moonbeam's damage increases. Regeneration reduced slightly. And Ricochet now gains one extra target per base level. I actually forget what it was in XVI. I think it was one per every two or something. But yeah, Ricochet will be really, really powerful now, I'm guessing. Infilade. Bonus cold damage increased. Initial range increased. Range gain per level reduced. And less mana cost at level 1. Okay. Moon Queen's increased... Oh, increased weapon physical damage bonus. That'll make... That'll certainly make Javazons stronger. Fairy... Okay. And fairy ring is just uh, stronger. Spears on. Less mana for takedown. 
poison damage increased for Hyena Strike, which is pretty impressive given that it can normally one-shot stuff anyway. Great Hunt is level 12 now. Greatly increased damage. Mana cost reduced and base number of spirits increased. Okay, that's good. Because like, I tried a Great Hunt Spears on and I failed at it, but that was when I didn't understand how the game worked, so... I... I am fine with willing to try this again. And Pounce... I'm assuming... It's level 24, so I assume it's incredibly more powerful now. Blood fire, Blood. Magic Missiles. Increased damage. I never liked Magic Missiles when I tried it. Reduced Balefire damage. Reduced Blood... Our Seek range when Bacchanalia is active for Bloodstorm. And slightly less duration per level. Wait, what? Wait, so it's... So it doesn't last as long? Okay. And Bacchanalia now activates with two-thirds maximum life instead of one-third, so that'll be... This'll be a lot more practical, at least. More Lava Pit damage. Okay, once I get done reading the Amazon, I'm gonna cut this into a second part, because this is gonna go way too long. Okay, stronger Fire Elementals, but now I can only have 15 of them. And... Increased Vitality Bonus per Gem... And what is this? Spirit of Vengeance will no longer be attacked by monsters. Slightly increase the spell damage bonus. Reduced animation rate. So does this mean the Spirit of Vengeance will be untargetable? If so, um... I assume it will still attack and cause reanimates, but will the reanimates also be invisible? in this case, or am I just uh, drawing conclusions? I'm not sure. But next time I will finish up the thought, the like, the changelog reading and the thoughts of all of these.